Hello, my name is Yemi. And my name is Ijoma. And together, we'll be hosting Africa in My Kitchen, a podcast that will explore African cuisine from the lens of an experimental home cook. In each episode of the podcast, we'll explore an African dish by country and discuss our, well, actually, Ijoma's experience in replicating the dish. The podcast is released every two weeks. Also, check out 234 Pantry on Instagram. That is numbers 234 P A N T R Y, where I'll post pictures and links to the recipes we discuss. Welcome to another episode of Africa in My Kitchen. My name is Ijoma, and here with me is Yemi, coming to be the friend in your ear. Hope everyone is doing well today, keeping safe in these times. We say this every week because we care, and in our minds, we are your good friends. Exactly. I mean, who else do you sit around the table talking about food with, if not friends or family? We're not your family, so friends is what we're taking. We're your friends. (laughs) Today, we are going to the east central part of the continent, to Burundi. And we are going to explore a dish titled Date and Banana Mix. And yeah, you guys will notice that this is more of a dessert. Exactly. So one of the things that did surprise me in researching this dish, because I was looking for, I think the first thing I did was actually try to Google snacks from Burundi. This one kept popping up multiple Mm -hmm. times. So it was a bit of an unexpected surprise for me because dessert that has banana and I expected to see because banana is a staple crop in Burundi but I was a little surprised by the dates but I figured well we have this snack here so let's go with it. Exactly and we'll talk about this a little bit more as we walk through the dish itself but right now we're gonna what we're gonna do as we typically do is tell you a little bit about the country. So Burundi is a landlocked country It is part of Africa's Great Lake region. Africa's Great Lake region is made up of multiple countries that surround the three Great Lakes. These countries along with Burundi are Rwanda, Kenya, Malawi, Tanzania, Uganda, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. These countries collectively surround Lakes Tanganyika, Lake Malawi, and Lake Victoria. The largest city in Burundi is Bujambura, with a population of about 1 million or 1.1 million. And the population of the country, according to the 2019 census, is just under 12 million. Burundi was originally colonized by Germany until after World War I. And after Germany lost the war, it became a Belgian colony. So it's one of the very few nation states in Africa, which means that after colonization, And even right now, the boundaries look fairly similar to how it did in the ancient kingdom prior to colonization. We thought this was really cool to add in because there aren't a lot of nation states across the continent. There are three ethnic groups in Burundi. The Tutsi and the Hutu together make up about 98% and the Twa ethnic group makes up the rest. The official languages are Kirundi, French, and English, while some people speak Swahili. As I mentioned earlier, one of the staples in Burundi is banana. They use it for a lot of things. They actually make a beer, banana beer. And traditionally, they sit down. I think that the tradition is for them to sit down together and have drink it from the same bowl with many straws. But I'm guessing that's a really, really traditional form, maybe old school form of doing it. Mm -hmm. The banana beer is called Urwarwa. And they have a lot of other local beers. So there's Impeke, I-M-P-E-K-E, which is made from sorghum. So onto the dish. Like we mentioned before, this is a dessert, a cake kind of. So it is the main, the main stars of the dish are banana and dates. Yeah, like no kidding, dates and banana. (laughs) So it's, the, the long gist of it is what you would be looking at would be something like a vanilla, a plain vanilla flavored cake with a layer of dates and bananas in between two layers and then topped with uh, sugar and cinnamon. Oh God, it sounds glorious. So um, it's, it's <laughs> Yeah. 
our listeners, I do have a really sweet tooth. Um, I have a very strong weakness for gummy bears. So just oh, hearing yeah. how do it, I do, I do. And it's Maynard's original. Only. Is that bad? Oh. No, that's the only one I like. Oh, okay. Like, okay, so there are many kinds. I'm not a gummy person, so I don't know. Yeah, but back to the dish, just saying, thinking of how delicious this, this is, like with the sweetness of the dates and bananas. Oh, mm-hmm. God. So I should say I like sweet things too, but I can find some things too sweet. So for me, a baklava is too sweet. And to be honest, dates, I find are a little too sweet for me. So I was a little bit hesitant. I'm not going to lie. I got this, I got this recipe from food.com and we will post the links as we usually do. But I reduced personally, I reduced my sugar quantities a little bit just because I didn't want it to be too sweet. But that being said, um, the ingredients you would require for this, you need flour, some sliced bananas, chopped dates, butter, sugar, plus some sugar for dusting, which I skipped out on a little bit, eggs, baking powder, cinnamon, salt, and a little side of melted butter. This is just for brushing the cake. Uh, It's pretty simple. In this case, I didn't do a lot of freestyling because it's baking. Like they say, I don't know if anyone else has heard the same, but baking is a science and cooking is an art. Long story short, if you do not respect baking, it will mess you up. It will really mess you up. So I was very careful to stay true to the proportions. It was pretty easy to make. It doesn't require, like the ingredients are not very extensive. Like I said, you make your batter from your flour and your eggs and your sugar, and you pour the batter, half the batter into a pan, top it with your bananas and your dates, pour the other half on, Mm -hmm. and bake it. Once you finished baking it, you bring it out, you brush it with some butter, melted butter, and sprinkle some sugar and cinnamon over it. So I'm not liking sugar. I used, I think I used only about a quarter of what they called for for dusting the, the cake. Yeah. And I'll be interested to hear how much sugar, how you're able to adjust it. Again, respecting mm-hmm. the fact that baking is more of a science, not an art. Yeah. I, I don't know if I would say I like to bake, but I bake quite a bit. And in my experience, when it comes to sugar, when it gets to a certain level, as long as I feel like as long as you've gone at least maybe 75% of what is called for, Mm -hmm. you're kind of okay. If it's a very sweet recipe, everything after that, as far as I know, is a bit on, can be shaved off Mm -hmm. according to your preference. So for the most part, I think you will be fine, but don't quote me on that. If you use a certain amount and it doesn't come out right, it wasn't me. It was her. Well, so it, wasn't, it definitely wasn't me but <laughs> and you know it's funny the funny thing is I actually don't mind baking I actually enjoy baking more than cooking because for me I like following exact proportions and mm. I like if you give me a set of instructions to the tea I will follow it mm. right so that is more my flair than just freestyling oh I'm the opposite like I will bake but I hate to be very honest with you, I can't remember the last time I didn't tweak a recipe, at least a teeny weeny bit. I don't know if it's just out of stubbornness, mm-hmm. but I very, I very much struggle. But when it comes to baking, I will try to follow as best as possible. If I'm, when it comes to cooking, if I'm looking at instructions or something like that, I will just skip right over that. Um, I think um, just thinking out, it, thinking out loud, sorry for interrupting you, but just thinking out loud about this dish, I think that this dessert... I think the only thing is I generally like to make my baking with whole wheat flour if I can help it. And so I looked around and did not find a version that had whole wheat in it, which is one thing I I felt, which is one thing I didn't quite like about, about the recipe itself. But I'm sure... In making it, one can change the proportion a little bit. Like usually what you do is you mix up the whole wheat with the white flour. But I generally use a whole wheat flour in my food when I'm making like pancakes or anything else. So that, I think this would be the challenge for me in just using the white flour. Or you could just use the white flour and not eat too much of it. <laughs> the thing not is... possible. Have you well, met me? I, <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, it's... Uh, so not not to digress too much, but mm-hmm. when it comes to whole wheat flour, I'm not a big fan of using whole wheat flour where it didn't call for it. 
whole wheat flour is a little heavier and a little grainier and it'll seriously affect the texture, which is why they usually say substitute up to a point. Mm -hmm. For something that's a little dense, like say banana bread, I find it's not so bad. It's, you can use your whole wheat flour all you like, but if you want something that's light and fluffy, and that's kind of like what this was, it was the, the, because of the vanilla, like it's a, it was like a plain vanilla fluffy cake. I personally don't know if I would like it with whole wheat flour, but somebody else might. Uh, back to, well, with this one, like I said, it was fluffy, it was moist, the I usually would found, find dates too sweet, but the creaminess of the banana kind of rounded it out a bit. So mm -hmm. I liked that. So it was almost like, even though bananas are sweet, they kind of cut into the dates in a different way and mm. just kind of neutralize that. It gives you that creamier, like fluffier yes. flavor. Exactly. And that's fantastic. So I liked it. Could someone educate us on how... Um, the baking was done. How was the baking done back in the day? We would appreciate pictures. We would appreciate comments or even inboxing. Mm -hmm. Because right now, this is a dessert that calls for using modern oven. And I have seen old school ovens where they used to make old school bread and pizza. But I'm not sure if that is the same type of thing that was used to make this old school mm -hmm. if this is an old school dish yes and that's that's another thing we, we were, i was also wondering i actually had a lot of questions about this dish one was the whole thing with the oven now that being said there are and we've talked about this before there are situations and there are there are dishes and meals and snacks that evolved fairly recently maybe in the last 30 or 40 years mm-hmm and so they were not maybe traditionally part of our culture, but somehow they came out and became that country's thing. And so I kind of wondered if this was one of those, particularly because of the use again of dates. I looking for information to indicate that dates are cultivated in Burundi, but I couldn't find anything. So guys, let us know if you've heard of this dish, if you are surprised as we were by this dish. <laughs> Any information? Would be and helpful. yeah, we're put, and we're going to be completely transparent where we have gaps in knowledge. And this mm -hmm. will, this is one of those situations where we do have gaps in knowledge. Google <laughs> did not help, so we actually need people to reach out and let us know, um, mm -hmm. you know, and filling those gaps for us and for everybody else. Because guess what? Yeah. We're gonna post your comments. Exactly. And even for the sake of, if you won't do it for us, do it for Burundi, like for the sake of posterity. Again, this is what we're talking about. And we've mentioned this a couple of times in a few episodes where we are seeing gaps. We talk about African culture and people worry in different parts of Africa that people are losing their culture, maybe because they don't speak their language, but our voices may be getting lost through food. Like our, our food is getting lost because it's not being preserved on the internet which is actually the new record keeper of history right exactly so please reach out to us let us know so that we can fill out like fill in the gaps and next time we won't come to you and be like yeah we are not sure we're not sure <laughs> there you go there you go <laughs> anyway so at this juncture we're going to leave you with that cliffhanger if there are any other desserts from Burundi that you want to highlight, please let us know as well. But we are coming to the end of this episode. It's really short and it's really sweet, just like the desserts we just brought your way. Have a great week or a great two weeks ahead. It's been a pleasure being in your ear today. That's a little weird, but okay. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Have a good one. Thank you for listening, friends. As a reminder, the podcast is released every two weeks. Follow Tanuka Media on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter to connect and say hi and to be on the forefront of upcoming shows and program schedules. Africa in My Kitchen is a Tanuka Media production, which includes shows like Overlooked with more on the way. The show is co-hosted with 234 Pantry. So while you're over on Instagram, follow 234 Pantry 
where Ijema shares photos and additional content. If you learned something new, consider giving us a high rating or review. It really helps the show grow. So until next time, share with your friends and feel free to add the podcast to your podcast listening rotation. Until then, bye!